what is in the name that which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet this is a famous quote from romeo and juliet and this quote has been taken from the famous balcony scene in the balcony scene we find romeo and juliet conversing with each other and they talk about name and they talk how important naming is and they say that you know naming is a very artificial and superficial thing because uh, you know it doesn't matter by what name you call a thing what matters is the quality of that thing and we also find on the other hand that names play a very influential role in our life we are known by our names so in this video i am going to talk about some pseudonyms or pen names of some really famous writers and remember to note of all these names because these names have been asked in net exams several times also at the same time you must remember what pseudonym actually means pseudonym is false name pseudo word means false if you have read uh, science in uh, 10th and 11th standard you must have come across the term called pseudopodia pseudopodia is basically false feet that uh, you know any uh, unicellular animal has and that feet help that animal for movement and for in taking food so same pseudopodia is very similar to pseudonym both pseudo stands for false so pseudonym is false name so in this video we are going to talk about some pseudo names of the really famous writers uh, if you are an ardent reader you must have uh, read prem chandra the great indian writer and even prem chandra had a pen name and the pen name was nawab rai if you are a harry potter fan then you must be knowing the pseudonym of jk rowling if not then go and check the pseudonym of jk rowling today so the first writer that we are going to talk about in this video today is robert burton robert burton is an oxford scholar and uh, he wrote this beautiful work called anatomy of melancholy in which he talks about different kind of melancholy and when he was writing this work he used the pseudonym of democritus junior okay and he published this work under the pseudonym of democritus junior this was a question as a net exam that under what pseudonym did robert burton publish his work anatomy of melancholy we also find a very special story related to his death actually uh, robert burton was a uh, astrologer and uh, as he was practicing astrology he predicted his own death and the day when he predicted uh, he was uh, according to his prediction the day on which he was going to die he became so conscious of this fact that okay i am supposed to die on the day i have predicted because uh, i need to tell the people how good i am as an astrologer so he committed suicide by hanging in the chamber of christian church on the very day when he predicted that he would die try to connect to this man that this person was so obsessed about his own predictions and wanted himself to be portrayed as a very very renowned astrologer that he committed suicide just because he wanted to make sure that his predictions did not go wrong so we have such psychopaths people in literature as well uh, now let's look at another important writer and his pseudonym the next important writer is charles ludwig datsun you must be wondering whose name this is so uh, i would like to tell you that charles ludwig datsun is the real name of lewis carroll lewis carroll has written this wonderful work called alice in the wonderland i'm a huge fan of this work because it is so 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 interesting and it talks about certain philosophical questions in such a easy manner okay and uh, you i would like to tell you this thing about uh, mr lewis carroll that he used to love students a lot actually what happened during his childhood days that he used to stammer a lot and when he was with children he found out that he did not stammer when he was with children just because he loved them so much and he felt so happy when he was with them that he did not stammer so he started writing uh, stories about children at the same time we should also understand this thing that uh, lewis carroll was a very modest and a private man he did not want people to know that he was writing uh, certain stories and certain novels so that is why he decided to use a pseudonym so that nobody comes to know about his real identity the next writer that i'm going to talk about is george orwell george orwell's real name was eric arthur blair he changed his name from eric arthur blair to george orwell because he used to admire the patron saint of england whose name was george and he was also uh, loving this river called orwell which used to run in uh, england so just because of these two things he started calling himself george orwell 
sometimes I feel that how awkward it would sound if just because of my love for river Brahmaputra, I would change my name from Harpita to Brahmaputra. Like, it, it's actually insane. But then fine, that's, that, that was Orwell's life and he could do whatever he, he wanted to do. Uh, we must remember this thing about Orwell that he was born in Bengal and he also worked as a police officer in Burma. So if you have read his work, Shooting an Elephant, which is a wonderful uh, essay, so you must know that he has described his daily routine and the kind of experience he had uh, as a police officer in Burma. He has written several other important works which we cover in detail in our online course. You can go to my website www.arpitakarva.com you will find a list of all the writers that I cover in my audio online course which is specifically designed for UGC net English aspirants. You can uh, look for the details which is given in the description box below and if you like the course then do join the online course. Uh, we will be studying several works of George Orwell in the course. We study Animal Farm, we study uh, the major work, the most prominent essay written by George Orwell which is Inside the Whale, Politics uh, and English Language so all these works are being uh, covered in my uh, online course in detail. The next writer that we are taking up is Charlotte Bronte. Charlotte Bronte uh, used the pseudonym of Tudor Ben. Basically, Bronte family had five daughters and one son. Out of these five daughters, two daughters died. The rest three became really great literary uh, writers. We have Emily uh, Bronte, we have uh, Anna Bronte and we have Charlotte Bronte. All the three Bronte sisters used pseudonyms uh, in order to write uh, works so that they are taken seriously because uh, they were writing in the romantics and Victorian period so during that time female writing were not appreciated by uh, people so that is why they used pseudonym you should also remember that out of these five daughters two of them Elizabeth and Mary these two daughters died in the boarding school uh, due to typhus and we find uh, this reference of typhus and the boarding school in Jane Eyre which is a very important work by Charlotte Bronte and that shows the autobiographical connection between the work and Charlotte Bronte's life. The next writer is Washington Irving. Washington Irving has used the pseudonym of Jonathan Oldstyle and Geoffrey Crayon. He is the author of this great American work which is called Legend of Sleepy Hollows. And uh, if you have seen Batman movies, then I'm sure that you must know about the city of Gotham. So, he is the person, Washington Irving is the person who renamed or who nicknamed New York as the city of Gotham. And if you've seen the recent movie of DC Comics that is Suicide Squad, they also mention Gotham and they say that Gotham is located near New Jersey. So this Gotham nickname is given by Washington Irving. Also you must remember one thing about Washington Irving that he is called first American man of letters, first American writer who earned his living solely from his pen. The next writer is George Eliot. George Eliot's real name was Marianne Ivan and she used the pseudonym of George Eliot so that her writings are taken seriously because when uh, in the Victorian century female writers were writing, nobody used to like it or nobody used to read it. It was called as chick literature like what we call it today. Chick literature is basically literature specifically written to appeal women. So she doesn't want herself to be categorized in that category. That is why she used a male pseudonym. Also you must remember one thing about George Eliot that she was a person who had to leave her education uh, because her mother died and she used to work as a housekeeper uh, and work with uh, her father. At the same time, one very important thing that you must remember is that she has written some really fabulous literary critical essays. So you must go and read those literary essays because there are times when they ask questions from the critical essays written, written by George Eliot. The next important writer that we are going to talk about in this video is Mark Twain. His real name was Samuel Langholt Clemens. Now there's a very very interesting story uh, on how Samuel actually got the name Mark Twain. Basically he was going on a trip. Uh, so he was sailing on a boat and he was going to New Orleans and while he was going he uh, was uh, you know learning how to swim from the pilot of that steamboat. So the pilot asked him to go into the water and try to swim in that uh, cloudy foggy water. So when he went there the uh, steamboat pilot told him that if in case uh, you are fine and you don't need any help you need to shout Mark Twain which means that
that water is safe. And he used to shout Mark Twain and that is how he actually got his name Mark Twain. So it's a very very interesting story. You should also remember one more thing about Mark Twain and that is that he is the one who coined it the term Gilded Age. And this was a question which was asked in net exam. So you must remember that it is Mark Twain who coined the uh, term Gilded Age which refers to a period from 1870 to 1910. So this is what is important to be remembered. Uh, before you end this video, do subscribe to my YouTube channel because I post videos every Saturday and every Sunday to help you guys with your UGC night preparation. Do like this video and give it a big fan thumbs up and also share it with other net aspirants. Also, before you end this video and you leave uh, to work or prepare for UGC NET, uh, do follow me on the social media platform. Uh, I run a GoNet quiz on all my social media platform which helps you to know what kind of questions are being asked in NET exam. The link of all the social media platform is given in the description box below. Also, go and check my website www.arpitakarbar.com. I'm running an online course in which I provide audio lectures for the entire UGC NET English course you can go and check the list of writers which are important and which I covered in my online course. So till the time we meet next, bye bye, happy learning, keep loving literature.